Edwards Air Force Base in California, the longest runway in the world. More than 21 kilometers long. Long enough to land the space shuttle and so wide that a light aircraft could land across it. Some of the most advanced aircraft in the world were tested here. There have been many X-planes since then. The Bell X-2, the X-3, and the remarkable North American X-2 flies its two predecessors. The mighty B-52, which dates back to the 1950s, and the B-1B Lancer, which first flew in 1974. But the B-52 still has a greater bomb-carrying capacity than the two newer aircraft. The Air Force intends to keep the B-52 in service until at least 2040, nearly 80 years after the last one came off the production line. who've flown the earlier prototype. So, Mike, how far are you away now from, uh, from making the first suborbital flight with one of these aircraft? Oh, we're getting close. We've got a few milestones uh, left. Uh, we've got captive carry and uh, glide flights, uh, followed by our uh, powered flights. So we're working hard to... to these look ones. like Mitsubishi Zeros and Kates, but in fact they're replicas. Real Zeros are virtually the non-existent. The Lightning could make incredibly tight turns. The Japanese call it the fork-tailed devil. Dollars will buy you a replica Luftwaffe classic fighter. Two spy planes from Lockheed's famous Skunk Works, the SR-71 Blackbird and the Lockheed U-2. The SR-71 flies no more, but the venerable U-2 is still very much alive and kicking. They had these 50 years ago. In fact, it was in a U-2 that Francis Gary Powers was shot down over the Soviet Union in the 1960s. Look at that extraordinarily long wing, which incidentally doesn't go straight through the fuselage. So this isn't an easy aircraft to fly. In fact, if you open the throttle too much, you can drag the wings off. The B-36 was so large that a small wheeled trolley was used to get the crew members from the front of the aircraft to the rear. This one now completely restored. Another resident at Pima is the Convair C-131, a military version of the Convair liner used by both Trans Australia Airlines and ANSET in the 1960s. This aircraft has been acquired by the Historical Aircraft Restoration Society and it's being restored to fly back to There's Australia. There's the SE-5 and the Bristol Fighter, classic fighters from World War I. A Hawker Hind and a Cirrus Moth. Only here will you see the Westland Lysander, an Army Cooperation aeroplane which distinguished itself in clandestine operations into occupied France. The Lysander was able to slip into tiny fields. In England, they don't have the B-52, but they do have the next best thing, the Avro Vulcan complete without warbirds. Antique aircraft from the Second World War. This is the B-17 flying fortress called Sentimental Journey, and it flies with the Arizona wing of the commemorative Air Force.
The fortress was the mainstay of the daylight bombing raids over Germany. Very heavily defended by four 50 caliber machine guns, it could take a huge amount of battle damage and still fly home. The propeller is from a DC-3 airliner, 